Hi, I'm Andrew Wilson. You're watching Channel 7. In this video, I'm going to do a gameplay rules tutorial for my game Wild Power. So here we've got a pretty basic setup of the unit decks, green, orange, and purple. We have the condition cards, pets, damage counters, the polyhedral dice, and the action dice. So the first thing that you'll do, the first player will do on their turn once you randomly determine the first player, uh, in this scenario I'll go first, is to recruit a character. Every turn you have to rec recruit a character unless you already have done so four times. I haven't done anything yet, so I'm gonna recruit. And my options are the top card of each of these decks. I could choose the green one, the orange one, or the purple one. In this case, I have Green Stock, Charmbringer, and Kid Wiz. So I will take a quick look at their special abilities, and I'm going to recruit uh, the Green Stock. So I'm going to put them into my, um, my field here. I've got two melee spots and two ranged spots. I'll choose to put them in my left melee spot. And really, that's all I do on my turn. And I pass the turn to you. Uh, now, at the start of each of your turns, you determine how many action dice you get to roll by how many units your opponent has in play. As a first player, you had none, so I didn't get any action dice. But now, I have one unit, so you get to roll one action die. So I'll take one of these action dice and roll it. And that symbol shows an action you'll be able to perform this turn in addition to recruiting. That is the green symbol, so you'll be able to perform a green action, which is to use a green power of a card in your hand or draw a green card. So this green unit deck, actually, we should have flipped up the next card to reveal it. And you can do your action and your recruit in either order. So we've got the Leaf Spirit is the new unit who came up. Um, after Leaf Spirit or an ally uses a green power, it heals two damage. So you could take that. Uh, you could recruit her. Or maybe you draw her because you wanted to use her power later in the game, which we'll get into. Uh, called Bluminate, which empowers this unit and uh, possibly one or more allies. So I think in this case maybe you want to recruit her. So we'll put her into a ranged position and reveal the next green card which is the Ranger Dryad. So you can't recruit again this turn, but what you can do is use your green action die. So, uh, we'll use that to draw a green card. You can't channel a green power yet because you don't have any cards in your hand. So you use this action to draw and add this Ranger Dryad to your hand over here. And then the turn would pass back to me. Uh, now my turn, my opponent, you, has one unit, so I will roll one action die. I've rolled purple, so I'm going to be able to perform a purple power or draw a purple card. Again, I got no cards in my hand, so I'll need to probably use that to draw. We'll reveal the next green unit. And uh, let's take a look at these new units. We have Wild Caller. Uh, her ability, her effect is one of your action dice each turn is set to wild instead of rolled. It's actually a very useful power. So I'm going to recruit, well, the problem with having too many of the same color units in play is it limits your options for effectively using powers from hand. So you might want to take a look at channeling or recruiting somewhere else. Kid Wiz says after Kid Wiz uses a power deal one damage to an enemy. Uh, he also has a very strong power called Wandify that does damage and can rearrange the enemy team. But I'm actually going to recruit the Kid Wiz. Take a look at this next card, and I have to use my action die to draw a purple card, so I guess I'll go ahead and draw this. don't have a lot of options, so I'll draw that. Now I did forget something, which I just realized, which is the green stalk's effect. It says when green stalk joins, empower it twice. Each time it takes any amount of damage, it loses one in power. So what I should have done, when as soon as I recruited green stalk, was take two of these empower condition cards and apply them to the green stock. And empower says empowered units use abilities as though their stats were one die size larger, which we'll get into later. So I'm going to put those two onto green stock uh, now that I've remembered that. And my turn's over, which means it goes back to you and you get to roll 
two action dice because I have two units. So you got these two symbols here as uh, the innate power symbol and the draw symbol. So the draw symbol just means you get to draw one card from any of the three decks. And the innate power symbol means that one of your units in play can use their innate power, the power that's printed on the card. Normally the units can't use that innate power. They have to use channeled powers from, hand, from your hand. So you actually, this is a little bit of a bigger turn, a lot more options, you still get to recruit. So I think actually it might be time to get, pick up an orange unit for your recruit and then use the innate power action to have Charmbringer attack the green stock, which is great because now we get our first example of an attack. So we're gonna use that and Charmbringer gets to use his innate power called attack with a smile. And it's a melee attack, which means he needs to be in melee and his target needs to be in melee, which we're good. Uh, Charmbringer and green stock are both in melee. Now if they were like this, they would still be in melee. There's no restriction on diagonal attack. But um, so we'll have them attack each other. Charmbringer actually also says when he joins, empowers allies. So just like I forgot green stocks, the fact that I almost forgot Charmbringer. So he empowers his allies, which means the leaf spirit becomes empowered as well. And this power is an orange power because it's on an orange card, which means when Charmbringer uses this power, he's going to use his orange stat. So each unit has three stats, one of each color. The first stat is their green stat, the second is their orange stat, and the third is their purple stat. And the stats come in the form of die sizes. In this case, Charmbringer's orange stat is a d10, a 10-sided die. So he gets to roll a d10 when using his orange power. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll that. And I got a 1, which is the worst possible result. Um, it says 2x, deal 1 damage. That means for every multiple of 2 rolled, on the, the die, he gets to deal two damage. Uh, unfortunately, one doesn't have any multiples of two in it. And if you roll a six or higher, he would empower, empower an ally. Again, this one means the attack was a failure. But if he rolled even a two, he would have done a damage, which is a special feature of wild power, which even though attacks can completely miss because of the dice, normally on ones and very low rolls, um, because of the scaling effects of the powers, most of the time you're going to do something with your power. So all that's left for your turn is to use your draw action die, which means you get to take any of these three cards and add it to your hand. Right now you've got a green card in your hand, and you have a green unit in play and an orange unit in play. So I would say maybe you'd think about drawing an orange unit um, because Charmbringer is pretty good at using orange with a d10 and the Leaf Spirit's pretty good at using green with the D10, so you have something for the Leaf Spirit and something for the Charmbringer. So let's take a look at this card. Angry Armor has a Brutal Smash power. For every multiple of one and a half, deal one damage. Uh, it's actually pretty strong, so go ahead and use the draw action to draw that card into your hand, reveal the next orange card, and the turn passes back to me. Now, it's my turn, you've got two units, so I'm gonna roll two dice. And I've drawn an innate power and the wild power. So the wild power basically lets me do anything, which is exciting. So let's take a look at my hand, I have Archangel. So this is a purple card, uh, the power is a melee. So I'd love to have my purple character use that power, but since he's at range, he won't be able to. I could recruit a purple character this turn and put her in melee, but the Vexing Fairy isn't great for melee. But hey, why not? Um, if I've got a purple power that's melee in my hand, I may as well have a powerful purple unit in melee. So let's give it a shot. I will recruit the Vexing Fairy, reveal the next purple card. Uh, I'm gonna use Actually, I'm gonna use my innate power to use Kid Wiz, uh, his Wandify ability. Now, he's got a purple stat of D10, 
So he's gonna roll a d10 to use his purple power. And I'll roll it. I got a four. In this case, he actually needed a five or more to deal any damage. So just like the Charmbringer's attack failed, the Kid Wiz's attack fails. But Kid Wiz has an effect, which is after Kid Wiz uses a power, deal one damage to an enemy. So even though his, his power didn't have an effect, his effect does, and we'll get to deal one damage to, we'll say, the Charmbringer here. And then I will use my wild power symbol to use a purple power. Um, actually, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Let's, let's rewind that, because Vexing Fairy has an effect, which is on each of your turns you may re-roll any one die. So let's re-roll that d10 instead of taking the four and see if we get something better. Oh, one. It's worse instead. So still nothing happens except for the one damage from the effect. So now we'll use the wild power to have Vexing Fairy channel a power. And this is the first time that we are channeling a power. Basically, you take the card from your hand and you uh, have the power. Instead of the character using their own innate power, they're going to use the power of the card in your hand. So the Vexing Fairy is going to use Divine Strike. Her purple stat is d12, and since it's a purple power, she's going to roll a d12. And we got a 3. So Divine Strike says 4x, deal 3 damage, and this unit heals 1 damage. So an utterly uneventful series of events. Uh, this card is now put into my personal discard pile, which basically I just play that uh, as a little face-up stack in front of me. And if you ever have an empty hand and three cards in your discard pile, you immediately get to pick up all three cards back into your hand. Um, but over the course of the game, you're going to build up your hand bigger and bigger with some of these draw actions. When you don't have good powers to grab, you're going you're gonna to draw with them, uh, especially with the colored faces like the, the green, the orange, and the purple. And if you ever unit ever has damage on them equal to their health, so the Jarmbringer has five health and one damage, if he ever had four more damage, then he'd be knocked out and he'd be put into my KO pile. And as soon as you have four enemy units in your KO pile, you win the game. So that's the basic gist of Wild Power. Unfortunately, we had some very unexciting die rolls. But I actually think, just for the sake of example, let's um, let's rewind that. Let's let's give the Vexing Fairy a better die result, just for the ex purpose of resolving one of these powers. So let's say instead of a, a one, we rolled a twelve. Well, now the Archangel, the Divine Strike power says. 4x, deal 3 damage, this unit heals 1 damage, which means for every multiple of 4, you're going to perform the rest of that text. Since 4 goes into 12 3 times, we're going to deal 3 damage 3 times, which is 9. So if we would rolled a 12 on that power, you can see that instead of taking no damage, the Charmbringer would have taken 12 damage and been knocked out. So that's an example of a successful power uh, <laughs> instead of all those failed powers. Um, some of the effects and powers can summon pets. The pets get to act once each turn. Um, they have their own innate power that they can perform every turn without using an action. And then there are these different conditions, like the Empower, which we never got a chance to use it, but the Empowered units use abilities as though their stats were one size larger. So the Vexing Fairy's purple stat was a d12, and she rolled a 12. But if she were Empowered, that d12 would have been a d20 instead. Uh, so that's an example of how Empower works. Uh, wounded characters, uh, when a wounded unit takes any amount of damage, it takes one more damage for each wound they have. And Stun requires that the player spend an action die to remove the Stun condition before the unit can perform any actions. And Ward is a condition that prevents the next effect of any enemy uh, effect or power from, from affecting the, the unit in any way. And then that the ward would be removed after that. So there you go, there's a rundown of Wild Power. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Maybe we'll do a full game at some point in the future. And uh, thanks for watching.